I want to start the class now. Last week, we saw some um, out of class programs. And you will recall I define out of class programs as activities that are sponsored by the school for the educational benefit of the students, but take place outside the classroom. Outside the classroom. If your device is unmuted, I will eject you from the class and I will not admit you in again. I have told you that immediately you join the class, the first thing to do is to mute your device. If you don't do that, I will eject you from the class and I will not allow you in again. We saw a number of these activities. You will recall we mentioned inter house sport competitions, we mentioned excursion, we discussed extensively on prize giving ceremony, palenditary Excuse me, I have to switch off my MTN line because that's the network I'm using for. All right. Um, inter school competition, school musical concert, children's day parade. All these were extensively discussed as examples of out of class program. This program can be called allied program adjunct program in the school system. They are not part of the core activities of the school, but they are needed to complement the core activities of the school. The development of a child cannot be achieved through one activity only. It is a composite effort, and that is why all these are other activities put together. We also give a kind of training to the child to make that child develop well. The importance of all these we discussed last week. Today, our main topic of focus is principles of out of class programs. Principles of out of class programs. Principles of out of class programs. That is our topic for today. This topic will take us around some precautions we need to take before we embark on any of the out of class programs. As beautiful as a program may be, if it is not well organized, that program may end up in disaster. We have witnessed cases where a school took out students on excursion only for them to lose half of the students. You will recall an incident that happened in Lekki some years ago when a tipper with a full load of sand ran into a school bus and killed the puppies inside the bus. I have also witnessed a situation where a school driver that picked a student in the school to deliver in our house, but out of carelessness, he was the same driver that killed that same student he picked from school. We have also witnessed a situation when some students were taken on excursion to a beach only for the school to lose some of these students. We can go on and on to continue listing some of these bad events that have happened or a good outing that started well, but ended in a bad note. We have 
we have witnessed this on occasions. Uh, and that is to show that before a school decides to take students out for any program, they must put some things in place. They must put some things in place. Those that just joined the class, use your, boot your device. Ajegule girls and boys. So for our program, not to end up in disaster, there are a lot of things we need to put in mind. And those things we need to put in mind are what we call principles of out of class program. Principles of out of class program. Yes. The number one principle we are going to talk about is student interest. Student interest. That is, before you take students out for any program, whether excursion, whether entire sport, whether parliamentary service, whether uh, musical concerts, or children day parade, the interest of the student, or let me say, the interest of the learner must be taken into consideration. You must carefully consider the interest of the learners. If you have a beautiful program, and your students are not interested in the program, I can bet it with you that you will wholly end up in frustration because those students will try to frustrate you and they will make sure that you did not get the best of such program. For that not to happen, you must consider the interests of the learners. There are many ways by which this can be achieved. Sometimes a little bit of persuasion may be needed in order for you to gain the interest of the learners. Sometimes you will have to give a kind of pep talk on the importance of that program you are organizing for the learners. If they don't see the benefit of this program ahead of time, they may not have interest in it. A good organizer, a good administrator will do well to sensitize the students, to prepare their mind to whet their appetite so that they will understand the reason why such program is being organized. Let us look at a program, for example, excursion. Assuming you want to organize an excursion to a particular place of interest, of course, it, there is possibility of having conflict of interest. Because where you think you want to take the student to, to learn some things, the student may not have interest in that place. And sometimes the student may tell you that, why can't you allow us to go to such a place? And here you have the teacher, you don't see anything they are going to gain in that place they are suggesting. When that happens, there will be conflict of interest. And when conflict of interest occur, students will not benefit from the program. So what do you need to do in this circumstance? You will have to solicit for their interest by telling them 
before the time what they stand to gain from the program. Goodness, can you hear me? I need response from you. So that, all right, that, that means I'm audible. All right, mute your device. So you give them a pep talk that will introduce the program to them and we whet, whet their appetites on what they are going to gain from this program. Another way you can convert their interest is you yourself will need to develop interest in that program. If you want to sell a product to someone and you don't see anything good in that product, I doubt if your disposition, your dimension will show good thing about that product. So you yourself must show a positive attitude towards the interest, as towards the program you are going to organize. If this is not done, you may not be able to sensitize or arouse the interest of the students. Just like um, classroom teaching, you will notice that when a teacher is starting a new topic in the class, it will first of all whet the appetite of the learners. This may be done by first of all, um, summarizing what they have learned before that will benefit their understanding of the new topic. And by the time this is done, this student or the learner will pick interest in the new topic that is about to be introduced to the students. This is to arouse their interest and make them develop a good appetite, anticipation for the new topic. So the same thing should be done. Make sure that your students develop interest in the program. The second point or principle that you need to consider is security consciousness. Security consciousness. That is the second principle you need to consider before you organize a program, especially out of class program for the students. Sandra, will you delete? Your device is not muted, and I want to remove you from the class now. Sandra, are you doing? All these late commas. Um, goodness, maybe we should stop admitting late commas to the class. They are disturbing us. They are disturbing us. I think it's better we stop admitting them. Don't admit anybody again. Let them stay out of the class. They are disturbing the peace of the class. Security consciousness. To be security conscious is to be alert to all things that can pose a threat or danger to the peaceful existence of people. You must be alert to all these threats. You must be alert to all these dangers. As the organizer of a program, as the person at the helm of affairs, you must not close your eyes against all these dangers. Well, it is um, important that you, first of all, make a tour, run the facilities where these program will take place so that you can identify some security threats in the place. Let us give an instance. Suppose you want to organize a football competition. It can be inter-class competition. It can be inter-school football competition. 
It is important that as the organizer, as the person at the helm of affairs, you first of all go to the field, that spot where the program will take place. When you get there, what do you need to do? Or what do you need to look for? You look for things that can pose as a danger to the peaceful existence of the learners. Huh? Not yet. So you must make sure that um, you identify all these uh, dangerous things that can threaten the life of the learners and remove them. For example, the example I was giving before on the field, you move around the, the pitch, make sure there are no sub objects that can injure the players on the field. You make sure there are no potholes. You make sure the environment is safe, uh, whether it's another, is secured against any external interference. Because the responsibility is on your head. And if anything happens, remember, you will be held accountable. And for any bad thing not to happen, you must ensure that the place you want to use is secure. As, at times, the facility may be a rented facility. Let us assume that you want to organize uh, a valedictory ceremony and you cannot do it in your own school premises because you don't have a befitting hall and you have to move out, outside your school premises to rent a hall. You must visit the hall before the date. You look around. Do we have any naked wire in the hall? Do you have anything that can pose a threat to the life of the student you want to take there? Is there any leakage in, on the roof? All these must be properly identified and taken care of so that the students will be protected against any danger. You must also make sure that their life is not exposed to external attack. And especially now that we have kidnapping and the major targets are schools. Of course, it's, it's no longer news here in Nigeria to see that students are kidnapped, carried away for ransom. So if you want to take students out for any out of class program, you must first of all ensure that these students are secured and safe. So safety and security measures must be seriously considered. Um, if the place you want to use does not have a perimeter fence. What can you do to ensure the safety and security of the lives of these students? Will you need the services of armed law enforcement agents? Will it be the possible to get the services of um, uh, people like uh, Neighborhood Watch in Lagos, people like um, uh, police or other uniformed men, if this will be needed, a proper arrangement must be made before the date. If the arrangement is made before the date, it will protect the school from experiencing any emergency that is not planned for. 
um, you observe that some of the schools where students are kidnapped, it may be partly due to the negligence of the administrator of the school. Sometimes they may see that some part of the offense is broken and they procrastinate. We will repair it, we will repair it, we will repair it, and they keep on postponing it until one bad thing will happen and everybody will continue or we begin to lament and regret. This must not happen if you take students out for any program. So we have discussed um, two principles now, student interest, security, and safety consciousness. The third one is availability of facilities. Availability of facilities. If you want to organize any program out of the class, you must consider whether the facilities you would need are available or not. It will not be good. For you to organize a program in which the facilities are not available. For example, you want to organize a football competition and you don't have a football. It may sound funny, but it happens. You don't have football, and you want to organize a football competition. Only for the, the, the players to get to the field, and you discover that the football is not available. Or you want to organize a program that will require electricity. And you know that electricity supply in Nigeria is erratic. And there is no provision for backup. In case there is power interruption, what do we do? If you do, if, if, if you neglect that aspect, I, I can bet it with you that you may be stranded. Because electricity may be available at the beginning of the program. And when the program is reaching its peak, it's reaching a point when everybody is becoming, uh, you are enjoying the program, power may be interrupted, and that may frustrate the program. If it happens, it may even lead to riots, it may lead to protest, it may lead to uncontrollable scene, because if students are not busy, you know they can engage in any other nefarious activities that we put the school in a mess. So consider the facilities you want to use. It may be a major facility or a supporting facility like electricity that I've mentioned. If it is a major facility, are you fully in charge of that facility? Are you fully in control of that facility? If not, you must make sure that you trust the person in charge of the facility. Let me give you an instance. Last semester when Zoom uh, virtual class was first introduced to the university, and we had to use that as the main medium of teaching students, of teaching you last semester. There were quite a number of lecturers that did not know how to operate this Zoom. Uh, there was one lecturer who had trusted the control of the Zoom application on the hand of a student. What did this lecturer do? This lecturer gave host rights to a student. And at a point in time when the lecture was uh, becoming interesting, the student just ended the class. The student just ended the class, and that was the end of that class. And the lecturer tried to uh, call back the class. It was not possible for him. It was a mess. What really made it to be a mess? It was because the lecturer who's supposed to be in charge, 
who was supposed to be in control was not in control of the facility. So that is the kind of mess that will happen if the organizer of a program is not in full control of the facility. So as an administrator, before you organize any program out of the class, you confirm that you have a green of the facility, that is you are in control of that facility and you can manipulate it the way you want and to the benefit of the whole audience. Another principle we want to consider is the age or maturity of the learners. The age or the maturity level of the learners. The maturity level of the learner is very important for so many reasons. One, for you to get the best of the program, for the learners to get the full benefit of the program, and for you not to expose the learners to danger. If you organize a program that is beyond the age of the learners to them or for them, it, it may expose them to danger. For example, if we have children in the nursery and primary classes, and these children are within the ages of two, between two and three, and you want to take them to a zoo, hmm? it's, it's, it's part of excursion. And they have learned so much about animals, both wild and domestic animals in the classroom. But now you want to take them to a place where they will see live animals. Perhaps you have taught them the various sounds of this animal in the class. You have taught them the feeding habits of these animals. You have taught them the physical behavior and outlook of this animal. They have seen this animal in picture. Now you want them to see the animals live in the zoo, in their natural habitats. You organize an excursion. Remember the ages of the puppies, two to three. You take them to the zoo. One, the zoo is far away. It will require about, uh, what is happening to goodness? The distance will require about two hours of driving. Two hours of driving. Uh, apart from that, there is no provision for toilets. And you know that almost every 30, 30 minutes, children of this age group, we always need to go to toilet. And here you are, taking them on a journey of two hours. No provision for toilet, no provision for uh, relaxation. You just put them in the bus and off you go. I am very sure that that organizer will be frustrated because the poopies will disturb intermittently. At interval, they will disturb the organizer for one thing or the other. And before you know it, some of them will even sleep off in the bus. And by the time you get to the zoo, after two hours, they will become inactive. They will even, they, 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 they won't understand what you are saying. And <laughs> I can also bet it with you that 
you will have to back some of them during the, throughout the program. The reason for that kind of frustration and mess is because that program is beyond the maturity level of that category of learner. But what will happen if students in SS3 are taken to such adventure? Students in that category, we enjoy it, we consider it as fun, no matter the distance, as they are going, there will be a lot of things to even talk about on the way. When they see the vegetation on the way, perhaps some of them may be a, a student of agri science or geography, and they have learned different types of vegetation in their classroom. Although they are going to the zoo to see animals, they have not reached the zoo. But as they go on their way, they continue to learn about the different scene on the way. Instead of the journey to be boring, it should not be boring because there are a lot of things to learn. And they will make a, a, a good sense of that journey. Unlike the babies that will not enjoy the, the, the journey because it is long, uh, higher students will enjoy it better. So you consider the maturity level. And the same thing applies. If a program that is meant for children is not organized for these higher uh, students, they too will not enjoy it. In fact, they will be making noise, they will mess up the program, and you will re regret organizing such program. So consider their age. The program, is it relevant to their age group? What and what are they going to learn in that kind of program? I'm in the class when I finish. So you must consider their age. Age is very important. Maturity level is very important. And it is only when you consider that, that you get the best from the program you are organizing. Just like you now, you are in higher institution. If any program that is meant for nursery and primary school is organized for you, I am very sure you know through any interest. And if you are forced to participate in that program, you will make a mess of that program. You disorganize the program because you will not show any remarkable interest. The next thing we want to consider, the next principle is extant laws. Extant laws. Extant laws. What do we mean? For every affairs of human being, there are rules and regulations in the form of law that guides our conduct. These rules and regulations are entrenched in the constitution or any other document. It may be in the act, it may be in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it may be in any other legal document. You must be familiar with the laws that guide your activities. In the Department of Educational Management, there is a course there designed for this purpose to expose you to the various rules and regulations that guide the activities of teachers, of school heads, of other stakeholders in education, for them not to misbehave. Education law is part of the course that students of this department must offer. So in, in this course, all these your uh, your 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 limits all these limits will be exposed to you your fundamental right as a teacher the fundamental right of the learners too as citizens of the country and as human beings are taught in this course and this will enable the administrator to know its limits 
so that he will not overstep his bound and he will not also commit unnecessary offense. You must be familiar with this law. There are laws that guide the conduct of excursion. There are laws that guide the conduct of uh, inter-house sport, children's day parade, uh, parade, school musical concerts. There are laws that guide the various um, activities of the various stakeholders in all these areas. Uh, you know that we do talk of no ignorance in law, no excuse. If you commit an offense, nobody will say because you are not aware of the law, you are excused. The laws are there to be used against any offender. So as the administrator of a school or as a teacher who wants to organize a program for the students, you must make sure you are familiar with this law so that you will not overstep your bound and you will not commit any, uh, any offense. If this is taken care of, surely the program will be a very good one and everybody will enjoy the program and nobody will be victim of any circumstance and the program will go well. So knowledge of extant law. Excuse me one minute. Sorry for that. So knowledge of rule is very important. Be familiar with the rules, pay attention to details, make sure you don't go beyond your limits. I gave examples of um, some proprietors and proprietresses of schools that drive the, their school buses. It is against the law. If a school wants to go on excursion, and the school driver is not available on that day, and the proprietor says, ah, maybe I can drive, or the proprietor should call any of the teachers to drive. It is a serious offense. It is against the law. The license that is given to that proprietor or that teacher does not cover passenger bus. If you look at our driver's license, you will see various categories of uh, uh, approval there. Some are given approval to drive a vehicle that can only carry one person. Some are given approval to drive a vehicle that can only carry him alone, while some are given approval to drive vehicles that can carry passengers. If your home is not in the category of those that can carry passengers and you drive the bus yourself, well, you may be fortunate if there is no problem, but if there is any accident, that person is guilty and it can be sent to jail. So these are type of the laws that you must be aware of. You must have knowledge of law. Then you must know your limits. Everybody has fundamental rights. As a, a, a human being, first, and secondly, as a citizen of Nigeria. Um, you must be aware of these fundamental rights so that you will not go beyond your limits you will not infringe on the right of another person. Remember your right ends where the right of another person starts. And people do say, I am not saying you should not swing your hand, provided it does not touch my nose. So that principle should apply when you want to organize out of class program for learners. The last one I'm going to talk about is timing. Timing is very, very important. Timing can be viewed in different ways. 
Tammy can be viewed in, in the context of a time frame. We can say between the hour of this and this. We can look at the attention span of the learner. What do we mean? Everybody has attention span. Sometimes if a lecture is too long, people will lose interest because it will go beyond their attention span. If you want to organize a program for babies in nursery and primary classes, you should consider their attention span. That program should not be too lengthy. If it is too lengthy, they will lose focus, they will lose attention, and you will not enjoy them, they will not enjoy the program. Then, if it is uh, adults, well, you must also be moderate and reasonable in your timing so that it will not be outside the attention span of these learners. Why is it that when you are in secondary school, a period used to be 40 minutes, 35 minutes or 40 minutes, but when you go to the university, it becomes two hours. Your, the attention span in secondary school is different from higher institution. Students in secondary school are still considered as teenagers with very short attention span. And this attention span graduates from level to level. In the nursery classes, they may say 20 minutes, 25 minutes maximum. Then you change to another activities. Then when the student, when the child is leaving nursery, is going to the primary, it may become 35 minutes. When the child is leaving primary for secondary, the secondary school, a period may become 40 minutes. And when that same child is leaving secondary or higher institution, it becomes two hours. You can see the gradual increase in the number of minutes or hours according to level of maturity, according to age, and according to the, the level of education. This is very important because if a program is organized outside the attention span of a learner, there will be no learning. Learning will not take place. That is one. Time frame is very important. Another aspect of timing is the period in which a program is organized. Of course, we know that in Nigeria, we have two types of weather or season. We have two types of season. We have the rainy season and the dry season. If you must organize an out of door program that will require use of open space, do you consider the season? Why is it that inter sport is always organized during the dry season? It is because inter sport is an out of door program that requires open field. And if you use open field during the rainy season, rain may disrupt the program. So you consider this also. The main reason why we organize out of school program is to complement teaching and learning. But if you organize a program that is messed up, teaching and learning cannot take place. And that means the aim is defeated. So you must be very careful. You make sure you consider this period, you consider the season, so that uh, natural phenomena will not disrupt your activities. Another uh, uh, aspect of uh, this period uh, of a theme is some physical activities like uh, PHE, physical and health education. You know, physical and health education requires practical sometimes. It is not every time they learn in the classroom. Sometimes the teacher may, 
may need to take them to the field for practical exercise. And when they engage in physical exercise, there's tendency for the learners to sweat. By the time they sweat, will they still be able to cope with that sweat in the class? So when is the best time to organize physical and uh, physical and health education uh, practical? Is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon? Is it towards the end of the school? All this must be considered so that the best of this program will be achieved. So far, we have considered a number of principles that must be considered before you organize a program out of the class. Remember I talk about student interest, which is very, very important. The interest of the student must be considered. Remember also that we talk about security and safety. We talk about availability of facilities. We talk about age and maturity of the learners. We talk about extant law, and we talk about timing. If all these are considered, the program is going to be wonderful. It's going to be a masterpiece, and it will benefit everyone, both the learners and the organizer. So I want to stop here because we are using virtual means of communication. Uh, there are many other things that are attached to this uh, Zoom application. So, and since we have considered principles of out of class program, I think we should be a respecter of this principle. I want to consider the circumstances in which this class is being organized. So let us stop here. But before we round up, I want to listen to your questions. I want to listen to your questions. If you want to ask a question, there are two ways of signifying your interest. Is that you raise your hand if your camera is on, or you use the raise hand button in the Zoom application. There is a device there that looks like hand. It's a button there. Just click it. It will signify that you have something to say. And then we will listen to you. So I want to see your hands. If there are questions. I'm still waiting for your questions. Uh, I can see some hands already. Ola Yinka Faro. I don't know the meaning of that Faro, but I can see Ola Yinka. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My question is that um, these principles we just discussed, yeah. do they only apply yeah. to out of class? Online in cash network is erratic. I can see that she's struggling with a network, but I've gotten a question. These principles, do they only apply to out of class programs? Uh, well, the answer is no, because for any program in the school, we must still consider all these programs, all these principles we have highlighted. But since our focus is out of class program, the interest is on how these principles can assist in getting the best out of out, out of class program. But it can also be used for other activities in the school system. Another hand, are your Mipo Oladele ask your question? Um okay, sir. Um under the availability of facilities that you explained. Yeah. 
give us mm. some examples. Okay, so can yeah. we also make it our first semester CBT examination as an example, our Fed examination? What happened in your Fed examination? Like, okay, mm. like this to ensure that there were computers and uh, we attended to we attended to appropriately. Oh, you know this your um, virtual uh, class or LMS is not an yes, out sir. of class program. It's not an out of class program. Is okay. a, a learning system, teaching and learning system, and that one was necessitated by the circumstances uh, and the situation we, we, we found ourselves, the pandemic that is really disturbing the whole world. So that example may not fit in in discussing availability of facilities. But I am still sure that we have other programs that we organize in the school. Just recently, you just finished the um, uh, Dean's Cup, Dean's Cup competition. You just finished it. It's an example. There are a lot of things you can bring up in that competition. Uh, it doesn't mean you concentrate on, on things that did not go well. Concentrate on those that also went well. You, you can tell us that in, to organize that program, that competition, the football uh, feed was in good shape. The sports center was in good shape. The security was okay. And that was why we did not record any casualty. So it, the good aspect of it can be used. And any other area where things did not go well, you can equally uh, bring it up. So that will fit okay. in better than the LMS platform. Okay, sir. Okay. Who is Sabo Nancy? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Ask yes, your sir. question. Yes, sir. So my question is coming from uh, um, extant laws. I don't really understand right. what they mean and how they apply to um, out of class programs. When we talk of extant, it means ex existing, existing laws. For every activities, there are laws that guide those activities. For example, if I want to, uh, as we are using this uh, learning medium, teaching medium, to deliver our lectures, there are laws. There are laws. The, the university has given us laws that should guide the way we use the Zoom platform. A good teacher must be familiar with those laws so that you will not, you will not go against the law. You will not contravene the law. If you are not aware of the law, you don't have knowledge of the law, and you work against the law, you will be guilty. And nobody will accept any excuse of uh, I don't know. The same thing applies to any program you want to organize. And I've given an example of some school owners that drive their school buses themselves. It's against the law because the driver license given to such owners does not cover carrying of a large passengers. The license given to me now is to drive my car and my car only. And if there is any need for me to carry passengers like um, uh, a team passenger that will require a bus, I better get a professional who has that driver, that class of license to drive such bus. That's what yes, I'm sir. saying. So if I, if I should now say that I'm not aware that my license does not cover that kind of bus, and I drive the bus and there is accident, Ah, I'm in Supo. So that's that's the kind that's an example of the law we are talking of. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. 
All right. No new hands again. I think we can call it a day. I will send the link to the video to you so that you can watch the class over and over again. Thank you. I enjoy your decorum. Hope to get the best of you another time and we we'll call it a day. You can now unmute. You can unmute your device and greet your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how fun. They move. They move. I did now. I do more. I do all right. <laughs> What's in the afternoon now? I just did. I just did. I have everything in the now. All right. So, no uh, uh, I want to end the class. See you again. Thank you, sir. Bye. 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 Bye.